Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. Good start to the morning that is. I've been gardening today and I'm gonna just take you for a tour around the garden because I, it's, I think it's the season now to be inspecting your garden across the board from seedlings to vegetables to flowering plants and fruit trees. And that's what I did. I had a quick tour around my little garden here to see what was happening and I noticed a few things. First and foremost is my, are my roses here, this arch that I didn't prune and I did mention it that there's a lot of plants that I don't get around to pruning on time. Even though I talk about it, it doesn't happen unfortunately. And you'll notice here now, you really got to stop licking my hands. <laughs> Please, go that way, go, just go. This is a, a climbing, well it looks like an iceberg. Uh, and it's got a lot of black spot. Now, if you have a close look at your roses and you notice this, it is black spot. Now, I could spray it. Uh, I probably will spray it, but I'm gonna wait for the first flowers to finish uh, blooming. And I'm gonna lose the second flush because you can see they're about to burst out there on top, or well, the first flowers that is still. But I'm gonna lose the second flush after the first ones because I'm gonna prune it back pretty hard and then spray it with uh, milk and water. So it's 50-50 milk and water. You can go one part to four parts water or 50-50 and give it a good spray. Now, they haven't been pruned. These were pruned. And have a look at these. These are in the, in the shade. They, get, they don't get a lot of sun here. Uh, only at the, at the height of spring and summertime, really, when the sun starts sort of creeping over the top. And they're doing pretty well considering they don't get a lot of sun. But we did have some black spot down here at the bottom in the cooler period. So it is caused by excessive moisture, you know, irregular watering. And well, in my case here, I don't do any watering. It's on a drip system and it hasn't been on at all. And well, it would have to be then if it's not by you by hand, it would have to be by the weather. So you get sort of rainy days, cool days, hot days, and it just knocks them out a bit like it does with us humans. But that's okay, you don't have to worry about it. Roses that look like that with one or two black spots, just take them off. But a plant like that, you need to prune it off. Yeah, look at this, I didn't prune this at all. You can see the old flowers. This is last year's flowers. Yeah, I'm lazy, if you reckon. I've got to cut that right back and that's what you've got to do with yours too. So that's going to come back right down. I've got to bring it right down. It's really too high, it shouldn't have been that high. That's all the new growth on top, no good. One day of hot weather we had, remember? A couple of days ago, or three days ago or so. Look at the burning on it. This is all the new growth. It's just knocked it right out. And this is what you've got to look out for your trees too, folks. When it gets really sudden um, northerlies or hot weather coming through, do look out for that and then try and protect them. CGWS if you want to spray it. I didn't spray this one and that's the result of it. Not only that, they've already started eating the fruit. Look at this. Look at this. It hasn't even grown yet, not even ripe yet. Nothing. Absolutely nothing on it. No sugar content or anything and it's already been eaten. They're taking the tops off as well. And that's all die back. That's got to get cut off. So look for your trees, look out on your trees for things like that to happen and do hang up your traps because I'm coming. I'm going to come and eat your fruit. It's got marks on it, but that's not fruit fly. That's just weathering. It's been hit here and there. Could be just a bit of damage caused by the wind, but you can get fruit fly. And if you live in a warm region and there's fruit fly evident in your neighborhood, that's a serious pest. Get yourself a fruition fruit fly trap, hang it up there to protect your plants and codling moth traps as well for your trees if you get codling moth problems. And if you've got your tomato plants growing big and strong, have a close look. You may have, and I've got one here somewhere. These are my little tomatoes. Yeah, see that? A flower inside a flower? That's useless, that's not gonna do anything. You need to take those sort of flowers off. And it's, I actually have received a few emails from people saying, what's happening to my tomato plants? Why are they doing that? Um, it's every single one on theirs. Just pinch them off. You don't need them to stay on. It's not a bud mite or anything. It's just, it's almost like a terminate flower. It's pr pretty much not gonna do anything else. You'll get little flowers on the side of it like that. Uh, no need to worry because the plant will still grow. Uh, if you find, actually there is one over there, we may be able to show you that one better. Come over this way, this one here. See that one there, it's already drying out. Just break it off, see that? No need to worry about it. Your plant will keep growing, it won't stop. But the longer you leave it on, the longer it takes for it to recover. But look, it's taken off already here and here as well and here. So it's growing everywhere. 
No problem about that, but just get rid of these terminate flowers. They're no good. They aren't going to do anything. They'll just dry up on the plant and just take the energy away and, and confuse the plant's direction. Once you prune it, feed it, liquid feed it. Pick your favourite. I'm not fussed if you don't use ours. Actually, I am. Use mine. It's the best. What's wrong with you? <laughs> no, seriously, if, you, if you're going to do any fertilising, keep it natural, organic, and keep it real. No, none of this synthetic fertilising stuff. And apply it every fortnight if it's a liquid fertiliser or the black root every three months. That's all you need to do. Don't overdo it because uh, it will work and you'll start getting more flowers than you can actually handle. Uh, and other than that, go for a walk through your garden, check it out. Make sure you haven't got any insects or pests or diseases going through the garden. And always go for the first option, prune it off. But sometimes it may not be just enough by pruning it. For example, citrus gall wasp, if you've got that on your citrus tree, you need to prune it, but you still need to hang a trap up and spray it to protect it. Uh, if you've got codling moth, if you've got fruit fly, they need to be traps. You can't just prune them off. You can use insect netting. That's a great way to protect your plants. Bird netting's a thing of the past. We've got to avoid that as much as possible because it does uh, affect our wildlife. So go with the insect netting. It stops the insects getting in like the bad ones, but do it after the flowers have set. Don't go netting your fruit trees while they're still blooming because you're not going to get the pollination that you need so the fruit can set or your fruit and vegetables like our tomatoes. Net them afterwards if you need to, but otherwise keep it simple, prune and check out our website, thesillysgarden.com. Lots of specials <laughs> from Eva Silly, Maresi.